وہ وسیم کو بھیجنا ادھر تو رسول اللہ وعلی آلہ وصحبہ اجمعین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحقوا بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First of all I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we say we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all praise belongs to him this means that no praise belongs to myself or yourself except who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes praise worthy because this is like the uh, Imam Saab mentioned about uh, self-control this is one of the reasons where we go out of control because anyone who attributes that I am better I have done this I have uh, when I have done this and this khidma and I've served the people I made this masjid I am a peer or I am scholar I am doing this that is from where a person or the nurse goes out of control because once you think you have done something and praise is worth you are worthy to praise then automatically you go out of control thinking yourself higher of others higher of yourself and lower of others so the mashaykh one of the great mufassir uh, Shaykh Ahmad ibn Ajiba rahimahullah ta'ala and others they've said Alhamdulillah does not benefit until a person negates hamd from himself like la ilaha illallah koi maabood nahi swai Allah ke swai Allah وہ اس وقت تک فائدہ نہیں دیتا جب تک کہ اپنے نفس کی معبودیت کی نفی نہیں کتا ہوئی میرا نفس میرا معبود نہیں ہے کوئی اور بھی شہر میرا معبود نہیں ہے تب جا کے only then Allah سبحانہ ہوا تعالیٰ believing that Allah is God benefits you otherwise مشرقین believe in Allah but they say we are also someone some God as well so also Alhamdulillah benefits when you say I am not praiseworthy and when you say I am also praiseworthy Allah is also praiseworthy then obviously you will go out of control so what Imam Sahib said that all actually we attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the giver and bestower I don't know if I had anything there were many awliya many sahaba even some anbiya they had dire desire that all of their ummah comes on guidance. They had a very dire desire that their own son, daughters, wives at least come on this path. But we find in the Quran, Allah says, Darab Allah, Darab Allah gave example of Sayyida Asiya, or Sayyida Maryam, and also the wives of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi islam and Sayyidina Lut alayhi islam in the same ruku showing guidance 
comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anbiya Ikram alayhi wa salam, awliya, they convey, that's why they are known as Anbiya. What does Anbiya mean? Nabi means the ones who gives news. News, one is our newscaster, BBC News, CNN News, they give from that channel. Anbiya are who gives news from the divine channel. The channel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, communication, which is known as wahi and revelation. And Rasul also means, it doesn't mean who will force others, who will force others, it means the message bearer, the one who delivers message. And they said, so if that is the case, that they have, they have, will deliver message and others, how can anyone else actually claim anything, I have this and I have the, I've done this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remember in this month also nearby this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he indicated that the mission is complete to the Prophet of Islam, he said, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتْحُ وَرَأِيتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ الْيَحْوَاجَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Pray, glorify Allah, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ And ask forgiveness and protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when me and you then don't have anything to say. Prophet ﷺ was asked, Ya Rasulullah, we know how to say salam upon you. Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. But we don't know how to say the rood upon you because that was first time the verse of the Quran was, for example, revealed. Prophet Islam said, Say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin. Say, O oh Allah, bless Muhammad. He didn't mention any title before his name himself. Imagine. Yes, it is our right. We should mention million titles. But look at himself. What he did himself, that's what we should do for ourselves as well. Not going after titles and praise. Because that is the, you may say, seed and mother of this going out of control. How did shaitan get out of control? Because he saw many beautiful hoors in Jannah. He saw palaces in Jannah. He saw the kingdoms of Jannah. He was still in control, although it's still difficult to control. Living in Jannah, not paying attention to the hoods. I don't think I can do that. We can't even keep our eyes down from even the women of this dunya, who are not so beautiful. Then the hoods. That's why they have makeup. What does makeup mean? Make up meaning there's something missing and now they have made it up. That itself shows that that something is missing. But that's makeup. Or make up this room. What does it mean? That it's now no good. So let's do it makeup. The real reality is not there. But there obviously the believer women, the Prophet Islam said, even will be beautiful than who's. So, how did he go out of control? With one thing only. Ana khair. Ana, two words. Uh, ana and khair. I, and he attributed goodness, praise to him. I am better. That brought the devil out of him. He was not devil before because they're shayateen from jinns and insan. He was not born. Like some people, due to their simplicity, uh, when they ask question, oh, why did Allah create devil? Well, who told you? Have Allah said that he created shaitan? He created jinn and human beings and fitra. He never created a devil. He created a, him to be a wali and he became very pious and righteous as well. And even was ranked even higher than actually, than me and you at one time. That he was taken into Jannah. So, he, so Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala 
puts the potential in jinn and human being to become devil or even higher than angels. But he does not force anyone. He gives freedom. So where did he get out of control? He was in control by looking at the whores, by palaces, paradise, living in the angels, well in control. When actually he attributed anachait, he attributed goodness to himself. And so remember these two words. When these two come together, it's a disaster. So if you are mine, ever you a thought comes, I am good, I have done much good, then I am very good, etc. Remember, you are on the road to become a devil. Sooner or later, this will become. It is so actually you say that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the Quran after Bismillah Rahman Rahim and Alhamdulillah. The praise when praise is for Allah, then not for me. Unless if Allah praises be himself, that's up to him. He praised Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and named him Muhammad, the most praiseworthy. Because praising him is the praise of Allah. Because he is the picture, painting, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. So if I, for example, praise this uh, scenery or this uh, calendar, oh, it's, oh, where have you brothers, oh, where have the Ghosiya Masjid made this, mashallah, very wonderful scenery, very wonderful clocks and things. Who am I praising actually? If I praise this creation of someone or production of someone, who actually I am praising? I am not praising really that scenery. I am praising the one who made it. That is what you should understand. A person who is reciting not at one time he is praising Rasulullah as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At one time. He is doing hamd and also actually salawat. Anyway, coming back to Meilad Sharif. Melad, you see, means birth. Birth of someone. It can be birth of someone. Islam has laid emphasis that when someone is born, you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not talking about wali. I'm not talking about sahabi. I'm not talking about anbiya. When Islam has laid down this principle, when anyone, Allah Azza wa blesses them with a son or daughter, what should they do on seventh day? What's it called? Aqiqa. What is Aqiqa? Aqiqa is another name of Mela. That Allah has given me blessing and I am celebrating by inviting friends, family and poor people. Everyone's Mila. Even Rasulullah Sallallahu did his Aqiqa when he was in Medina to Manawar. Which was his actually Mila, meaning Aqiqa is Mila. So mine and your son and daughter, they get Aqiqa. They get celebration. Now what to say about the son of Sayyidah Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha? The son of Sayyidah Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, you see, we are living in age of fitna. Here now people don't listen to anything. Everyone is a scholar. Everyone is a mufti. Everyone is a philosopher. So, we have to be careful to present things. So, I normally invite people through three things only. Because they don't believe in any, for example, my, oh, I don't believe in this Bazur, who is Allah Hazrat, who is Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Daba, who is Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jalani, who is this, oh, I, do, I know, they know one to me. Okay, only they listen to Quran and Hadith also which is Sahih. Or third thing they listen to is intellect, logic. That is the way. So I would just, very small point, just mentioning indicating Quran so that you know you don't need any proof of Melad from actually Hadith or actually from Sahaba or anything because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi taught us that if you find if you are, have an issue he said to Sayyidina Muhammad ibn Jabal and other where will you find? He said from Quran if you don't find in Quran then in the Sunnah 
So what does we what do we find? What is the first story mentioned in the Quran? Anyone know? I hope you all know, but actually I'm just asking. First to ever story mentioned in the Quran. I'm not talking about hadith, sahih hadith, or anything whatsoever. Because the person, oh, this is this, this is that. Just for your knowledge and sharing with others as well. First ever story mentioned in the Quran is the story of Melad. Do you know that? I'm going to prove you now as well. First ever story from Alif Lam Mim Zalik Al Kitabu La Raiba Fihi Hudalil Muttaqeen. It goes down to Ya You actually other the, the first Ruku of Surat Bakara and then the first ever story is meant starts from Wa Iz Qala Rabbu Kalil Malaikati Inni Jailun Fil Ardi Khalifa. First story starts from Sayyidina Adam al Islam where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala begins men saying that mentioning to Malaika that I am going to actually make a person a Khalifa. And then the story comes that he made, created the body of Adam al-Islam on the earth, but the body did not have any spirit. It's not life. Milad is when body becomes life. So the body is taken up to the heavens. Simple. Everyone knows this. This is not a like a unique story in the Quran, meaning it's everyone knows. The body is taken, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angel, Faiza sawaituhu, when I settle it, and when it's ready, wana fahtu fihi min ruhi, and when I blow into this body a soul, a spirit from myself. What does that, what would happen if a spirit is blown into the body, what does happen? Melad happens because Adam al didn't have a mother and father, so he would not be born by some, someone. So his body is there and Allah is saying to the angel, firstly Allah called angels. Why did he call angels to worship? To do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning his glory to them or anything else. There we know now why he called, he's saying, Faiza Savaituhu, when I have rectified, when I've settled and the body is sound, one fahtu fihi min ruhi, and I have blown into Adam al Islam's soul as to body as the spirit of my from myself, with mean a direct, not through an angel. The angels were there. Angels were their angels were the participants, they were the audience. So that's why Allah is referring to him directly. Although the spirit is also a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, Faida Savaitu and Afahtu fi him in ruhi when I blow the soul. What should you do? Angels, what should you do? You should celebrate. How you should celebrate? What should you celebrate? The birth of this personality. Adam Ali Salam. How should you celebrate? فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Do sajda. This is celebration. And for simple-minded people, they object to why we are doing qiyam. Here Allah is asking to do sajda to Adam al Islam of ta'zim. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Prohibited in Sharia Muhammadiyah, now sajda is not allowed tazimi, but qiyam, actually people do. So everyone does, so this is. Then the story continues. Whoever did not participate, as you know, shaitan, what happened to him, whoever did, whatever. Anyway, conclusion is, first story is story of, central theme of that story is Melad. We don't need hadith or any other proof. Or tell me from when did Sahaba did this. That is when Allah don't do it. Allah Azza wa Jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is silent. We can go to hadith. Why they say, oh, come to hadith, come to hadith? Because they know the, the Quran is there and etc. Now they have to find and then with the hadith they find fault like this. Oh, it's son and this and son and that and this and that etc. etc. Or the, you may say, the weirdest thing I have heard was 700 years uh, before there was a king, he start 
Allah is king of kings. He is starting millions years before. I don't know where they get the 700 years before actually king. If he did, it's good and well because celebration can take different modes. People can feed people like in Morocco, in many countries, people invite families. In many countries, people feed the poor. In many people, they actually visit each other. In many people, they do julus. In many uh, cities, they do lighting. Meaning that's the different forms of celebration which the Sharia have not prohibited, nor it has said you must do like this anyway. So anyway, this is just I'm touching upon actually Quran. Now coming to uh, the topic uh, as well, because that's very, one is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and one is why he came. So if I have come here today for a beyond, for a speech, and you say, okay, oh, the other sahab have come, thank you very much, we have food for you. But I say, I have come to deliver a message. Oh, no, you can't deliver a message. I won't be happy. I have not come for food. I have come for a purpose here. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Milad is what the Prophet Islam came to, this from Alme Arwa to this dunya. This is his Milad. But when he came, then he said that I have come here for a mission. Who is going to help me? Man Ansari illallah, like Sayyidina Isa al-Islam, that who is going to be partner with me in the sense to convey this message. Some people accepted, some people actually did not. And that is much more important. As the ulama say, there are five hijras. Five hijra. One hijra, hijra means journey, <coughs> traveling. From the world of spirits to this dunya. That was when Rasulullah was born. So what is the requirement of that one? Is that his personality came, his beauty, and what did Rasulullah do all these 40 years? What did he do? When he did not convey the Quran, what did he do? This is a message for me and you. That if some people are not practicing yet, what can they do? There is a lesson for them in that part of Sirah as well. What he did was khidmat khalq Hilful Fudul. That is an organization, social organization, like we have Muslim charity, this welfare trust and that welfare trust. This was a welfare trust of Rasulullah Muhammadan welfare trust was known as Hailful Fadul, in which they would gather with like-minded people and they will help the widows, orphans, needy, poor, laborers. And if anyone is oppressed, we will stand with the Muslim. That's what he did. And he liked it so much. Rasulullah liked it so much that he said in Medina Sharif, when even the Quran has been revealed now, most of it, he said, if someone makes this type of organization today and invite me, I will participate. Even in non Muslims. Helping the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, because why? He was Rahmat Alil Alameen. He was not Rahmat Alil Muslimin only. Angels, Malaika, everyone was benefiting. So the first hijrah from, Mac from there to Alme Arwa to Makkah and his birth, hijrah, his shaksiya, his personality, his shabail, 40 years of just, Allah said, now just 40 years, just look at his personality. Look at his character. Just observe him. This is Melan part. The Sira part is actually 23 years. Meaning when the Quran was built, what is the Quran? Amma Aisha said, Kana hulukuhul Quran. Quran is the first Sira book of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when people ask, oh, what is the best Sira book of the Prophet Islam? Well, Quran is the best Sira book. Whatever akhlaq, whatever teaching you find there, that is exactly 100% the picture of the Prophet Islam. Perfection. Perfection. Like the Ulama say, the Sahaba Ikram, Rizwan Ajmai say, just mentioning one thing about his beauty and this. And they said, uh, when we used to sit with the Prophet, like for example, people come from there, 
And they say, when we used to sit with him, we had our head down, and when we came and sit, we, two things, three things they mentioned. They said, first thing is that there was like a magnetic power which was pulling us towards him. It's kind of like, oh, we want to fly, but we are staying there. Second thing, they were like when you have wind blowing, fan wind blowing, he said, if the wind was blowing in the majlis of Rasulullah there were waves and waves of fragrance coming towards the gathering. Like you are sitting here. We have to put perfume here, there. They said, this is, a, now we don't know these things. We have not seen, we have not experienced this thing. Yes, we can do if we do, if we love and stay up to the Prophet Islam expectation, we will get his company in Barzakh, in, even in, uh, you may say, Day of Judgment, and even in Jannah. It's not a long time, it's not time, it's not time. The wait is not long. People think, oh, there are millions here in Barzakh, then 50,000 years in Day of Judgment, then there will be Bridge of Sirat, and then, no, my brothers. That is only for some people. Rasulullah mentioned in Hadith, whole day of judgment will pass on a true believer like time between Zohar and Asr, few hours. And bridge of Sirat as far as is concerned, 1500 years distance, he said, many people will ask, angel, oh, when is that bridge coming? We saw it, but uh, when is we going to get on it to get to Jannah? They say, you have. You crossed it, like blink of an eye, or like lightning, Rasulullah said. So my brother, like Prophet Islam mentioned, between Zuhur and Asr, four or five hours, really the separation is not very long. As soon as we die, it's a matter of four or five hours, and here, there you are in Jannah and with the Prophet Islam. It's not a very, yes, if I am sinful, I am bad, then it's very, very long, thousand and thousand, fifty thousand years. So the one person was saying, crying to a saintly person, uh, he said, oh, I'm, he said, why are you crying? Why are you? Oh, I've come near that, I would like to visit Medina. He said, don't worry, you'll see Rasulullah tell me if you are really true. Soon, if you die, if you live one, two years more, you will see Medina. And if you don't live, you will be with him. So what's they crying about? So, uh, just mentioning the uh, the aura, the actually atmosphere around Rasulullah and Sahaba are explaining. We cannot really actually understand or experience, but can listen only. So here you have come. First thing is that you are finding in your inner self that you want to go forward. It's pulling like magnet because the Prophet Islam is ummi. Ummi one meaning the region, a region not of. Only one thing, a region of whole of the universe. He's like a mother to whole of the universe. His nur is asal of every creation. So every cre creation is pulled towards him. So they said we, we found this pull towards him. Secondly, the fragrance will come in. And thirdly, there was such light around him that it was as though forcing us to see and look at him. But whenever we, whenever we raised our heads little bit, his jalal and dignity was such and oh was such that we could not see. We could only see a vague light of a thing. That's how they lived. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many of the sahaba when they were asked to mention, oh how did the Prophet Islam look, how did he look, they could not. Hazrat Amr bin al anhu in Egypt, lying on his death bed, near his death, lying down, people are massaging his feet. Oh, you are Sahabi, there are no other Sahabi left. You are one of the Sahabi here. And they were asking questions, oh, did you accompany Rasul? He said, yes. Did you participate in war? Yes. Tell a story, he would tell a story. And then one person said, oh, how did he look? He was lying down on bed and he got up. 
وہ بیٹھ کے اٹھ کے بیٹھ گئے انہوں نے کہا کہ غصہ آپ کو جلال آپ نے کہ ہاؤ ڈیئر یو آسک ہاؤ ڈیڈ ہی لوک آئی ہیو بین ان ہز کمپنی مکہ بٹ ہول لائف آئی ہیو ناٹ لکڈ ایٹ ہیم ود فل آئیز اوپن اینڈ فوکس ڈیو ٹو دا ادب اینڈ دی رو دا وقار اینڈ دا ڈگنیٹی ہی ہیڈ سو دس از دا کائنڈ آف پرسنالٹی آف دا فاٹ الاسلام صحابہ سیز سم پیپل لک ویری گڈ بیوٹی فل فرام فار And when they come close, they say, oh, no, that's not. And some look very beautiful from actually close by and not from. Said Rasulullah was that if someone looked at him from distance, he would actually be attracted and pulled in the unparalleled beauty. And if he come, became closer, they were astounding by his beauty. And if they focused unilaterally on any of his organ, In eyes, like some people as a whole, they look beautiful. But Vaseem, the meaning of Vaseem is that when you look at each, every organ separately, like beard separately, hair of beard, ear lobes, one eye, the nose, actually, shoulders, each individual thing was unmatched and unparalleled beauty. So whichever the person would see, he would just be lost in that. <coughs> so this, this is to do with the 40 years, meaning actually with the Rasulullah Milad, Milad actually. Then there was Hijra from Ghare Hira to Makkah, 40 years. What is the requirement for that Hijra? That was a Hijra as well. That the Prophet Islam gave purpose of life. یہ جو کلمہ آپ پڑھتے ہیں نا جسے سواب کے لیے نہ پڑھیں دس از ویری بگ دس از اے مشن اسٹیٹمنٹ آف اے مسلم لائک آرگنائزیشن آف مشن اسٹیٹمنٹ پیپل آف پرپز زندگی کا جو مقصد ہے یہ لا الہ الا اللہ میں بیان ہے کہ لا الہ الا اللہ نتھنگ از ٹو بی میڈ ورتھی آف میکنگ پرپز آف لائف اے ڈیٹی ورتھی آف وور شیپ اور مقصود اینڈ مطلوب ایون دون دا نف وائف ہسبینڈ چلڈرن منی نتھنگ ہو از وٹ از اللہ اللہ اونلی اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ اللہ از ہو از گوئنگ ٹو اسٹیج سمپل ریزن بیکاز وٹ ایور یو میک پرپز اٹس گوئنگ ٹو کنٹرول یو اٹس لائک گیونگ ریموٹ کنٹرول اف یو یو وانٹ ٹو گیو یور ریموٹ کنٹرول ٹو منی To your wife, people don't give their bank account to each other. But they give their life to shaitan sometimes. If I'm making purpose of life, oh, I want to earn this, this is my life, my wife is my life, some of my children is my life, some of my money is my life. Well, whatever you make, that is your then purpose of life. With that is what is going to control you. That's why Rasulullah said, لا يؤمن أحدكم. Why did he say he lied? He wanted people to praise him. He didn't say he didn't want to praise. He was the most humble person. He knew that if they love me more, then they will be controlled by me. Don't you want to be controlled by the Prophet Islam? Don't you want to give him the choice to run your life, or do you want to give choice to Shaitan to run your life, or any willy nilly here there, any rich person? Yeah, you can give him if he gives you half of your, his wealth to you. But I doubt that. <coughs> What is this? Here is Prophet Islam who is opening the doors of heavens for you. And success for you. Whilst he himself lived a life of humbleness. So purpose, La ilaha illallah maqsadeh zindagi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how do you achieve this purpose? The second use of kalima, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this personality will be, is the model to achieve the greatest purpose of life, which is Allah's pleasure. Model is the Prophet, so be very clear. We don't worship Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's not a God. He is the model to please God, the only and one model only. Now, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is what he gave in Makkah Sharif. Then there was a hijra from Makkah to Medina. What was the, uh, no, before going there, there was a hijra again from Makkah 
to Masjid Aqsa and to the heavens. وہ بھی ایک ہجرت تھی وہ بھی ایک میلاد سمجھے ہجرت تھی ایک سفر تھا واٹ واز دیٹ دا ریکوائرمنٹ ایف دیٹ از دیٹ وی ناؤ ٹیک آور ایمان ٹو دا ہائیسٹ لیول دیٹ نو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہیو سین ایوری تھنگ وچ واز غائب بفور ایکسپیرینسڈ ایوری تھنگ ہیز بین دیئر دا سلا از اے گفٹ آف دیٹ سفر اینڈ آور اوریجنل our original home which was alam e arwa rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went there and saw everything and told us everything well that's what's happening there firstly it was raib now it is seen then there was hijra from makkah to madina to manawara what was there now rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then gave tarbiya tazkiya akhlaq the rights of people and all of these things the ahkam the detailed ahkam so this is the requirement uh, this is the taqada and demand from us of that hijra that we adopt that part and then finally his hijra was from this world from madina sharif to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla majduhu and what was that hijra for what's the requirement of nad which means khatm nabuwat what's khatm nabuwat khatm nabuwat means that now we have to do the job of conveying in a nutshell there's not going to come a new prophet or new guidance that's why khatm nabuwat why ulama emphasize so much on khatm nabuwat because if khatm nabuwat is not there prayers can become five to one haram can become halal hajj can actually just vanish anything can happen that's why ulama people think or they ask oh why are they so strict about khatm nabuwat what's big deal about the big deal is the whole of the deen collapses because if there is another prophet false one come he can cancel he can say i am the prophet now you don't have to pray you don't have to pray the zakat just have a good time and enjoy like musalma kazab did why people turn to him one of the reason for your knowledge i'm saying ye ek banda tha jisne nabi alai salam ki zindagi mein nabuwat ka daawa kiya wo kyun log aaye uski taraf gaye wajah ek thi ek to usne do namazein maaf kar di jaise bahut kai jo hain yani baat ka acche log bhi duniya mein hain acche buzurg hain ulama hain na par lekin hain kuch aise پیر کہہ لیں یا علماء دنیا کہہ لیں وہ یہ نماز ہی ہم کس لیے ہاں آپ کی ذمہ داری لے لیتے ہیں یہ بھائی وہی کام اس نے کیا مسلمہ کا ذات دو نمازیں انہوں نے کہا فجر مشکل ہے جی مسلمہ کو کہا کہ اے اللہ کے نبی فجر بڑی مشکل ہے جاگ نہیں آتی شاب تھکی ہوتی انہوں نے کہا چلو وہ معاف ہے دونوں زور اثر مگر پڑ لو پانچ سات ہزار بندہ جو مسلمان تھا مرتد ہو گیا اسی بات پہ اے نبی تک گنجائش دے رہے ہیں یہ تو کنسیشن دے رہے ہیں یہ تو ڈسکاؤنٹ دے رہے ہیں وہ تو بڑے سخت نے وہ تو کہتے ہیں نہیں کون پانچ ہی پانچ ہی رہنی ہیں تو اور اس نے یہ کہا کہ یہ زنا بد نظری کے بارے میں بھی اس نے گنجائش دی تھی تو یہ دیکھیں یہ ہسٹری میں ہوتا آیا ہے اور یہ ختم نبوت اس لیے آپ نے بچوں کو بھی آپ نے بھی مر جائیں نماز نہ پڑھے روزہ لیکن کم از کم آپ کا ایمان عقیدہ اور اسلام محفوظ رہے گا تو اس لیے وہاں کوئی بھی کوئی بزرگ ہو یا کوئی بھی کہہ رہا ہے کوئی عیسیٰ علیہ السلام بھی کوئی اضافہ نہیں کر سکتے شریعت محمدیہ میں انہوں نے بھی آ کے امام مہدی کو کس لیے مسلح پر کھڑا کرنا ہے لیکن حالانکہ وہ نبی ہیں عیسیٰ علیہ السلام درجہ زیادہ ہیں کیونکہ وہ اس وقت امتی بھی ہوں گے نبی علیہ السلام کے اور نبی بھی وہ ہیں پہلے ہی رسول ہیں وہ اس لیے دے ول سیٹ ہو امام مہدی اسٹینڈ اینڈ دا مسلح سو دیٹ پیپل کین نو that I have not come as a prophet or a law giver in any way. I am a follower of the Prophet Islam. And Imam Mahdi at that time will be representing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because he's from his awlaad. His name was, will be Muhammad. His father's name, Abdullah and Amir. Yeah. So, dawah, now conveying the message to others, that is the demand requirement of the last hijrah, meaning the Prophet is now going from this earthly life to the transient life to the ever life. Uski phir zumbay dari hamare shoulder par aagi hai, ke ab hamne message dena hai. Or ham soye hai, mujhe ek ladki ke saath talak paida ho jay, mein do, ek million bana liya, do million. Yehi karna hai aapne. بچے بھاگ گئے بیویاں بھاگ گئیں لوگ مطلب تتر بتر ہو رہے ہیں 
اسی کے پیچھے لاکھ کے چیزوں کے مقصد ختم کر دیا اسٹل رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ڈیزائر واز دیٹ مائی اول امہ بکم مسلم مائی میسج از کنویڈ ہی واز کرائنگ اینڈ ویپنگ بفور ہی لیفٹ دس فیس آف دی ارتھ بیکاز ہی وانٹیڈ ہیز میسج ٹو بی کنوے صحابہ سیڈ وی ول ڈو اٹ ایز مچ ایز وی کین دے ڈڈ دے لیفٹ ایوری تھنگ اینڈ ڈڈ ٹرائی ٹو کنوے اٹ اپ ٹو ٹرکی اپ ٹو چائنا But still, as my brothers and sisters, you know, there are 8 billion people in the world, 6 billion still that message have not reached. And those 2 billion who have, like me and you, only 10% are practicing. 90% are, they are just Muslim by the name only. Wo Juma ke Muslim hai, ya Eid ke Muslim hai, ya Nika ke Muslim hai, Janazeh ke Muslim hai. Darmiyan mein wo aapne gaib hai. کبھی ادھر چلے گئے کبھی برادری کے پیچھے چلے گئے کبھی ادھر کبھی ادھر تو ان تک کون پیغام پہنچائے گا حضور علیہ السلام کی آواز تو آج بھی لگ رہی ہے ہی از کالنگ ٹو ڈے ایز ویل ہو از گوئنگ ٹو کنوے مائی میسج ٹو مائی اما کون ہے آج بھی جو اٹھے گا اس لیے ولی ولی بنے ہیں بیکاز دے اسٹوڈ اپ اینڈ دے اسپینڈ دیئر لائف دین ٹو فلفل ہز وش کتنا خوش قسمت ہے وہ بندہ جو نبی علیہ السلام کی خواہش پوری کر دے How blessed is the person who fulfills the wish of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ek hai, meri puri ho jay, wo jay. Achha. Dawa itni important, uh, you mean conveying the message. Uh, I'll tell you a story mentioned in the books of Shira. One camel, ek oont aata hai Nabi alayhi wa sallam ki khidmat mein. And he comes and he's crying, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, sahaba could not understand what he's saying. He's, they said that he, brought his face, his mouth near the Prophet Islam and made a sound. We could not understand. We could not understand what he was saying. Rasulullah listened. He did it second time. Uh, Prophet Islam uh, mentioned to him. As soon as uh, he, he was just there and the Sahaba asked that what is he saying? Prophet Islam said he is saying that uh, he is, belongs to one of the persons in Medina and, now, and he has been working hard all his life. Now he's gone old and he's heard that his owners, the family is doing mashwara, consulting to slaughter him that he's not used of any, he's just eating food and things, he's not used of um, taking any luggage, whatever. So let's just slaughter him and eat and whatever. And that's why I have run. That's why I have come to here. He said, that's why I'm coming here. So in that time, in that time, the owners also came. They also came. They saw that they saw that this camel is, which I was, we are finding, he said, they said, oh, Ya Rasulullah Sallam, we are finding Uh, for three days we are finding this animal, he lost, he's, he's here, we found him in your majlis here. And it's mentioned in the books that the camel was standing here, they came there, the camel came and stood behind Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Islam said, Allah knows better, this animal is saying that you, he served you in winter and in summer and did everything and served you well and now you are doing consultation mashwara kar rahe ho isko ab zabah karne ka they said ya rasul 100% true that's what we are intend to do because he's not now you aapne farmaya ke jo achhi tarah khidmat kare uski yahi jaza hai anyone who served you said he served you well Anyone who serves you well, this is the reward you give him? That you slaughter him? They said, uh, okay, uh, now if that's the case, then uh, we will not, we will not uh, sell him, we will not slaughter him, we will let him live. Probably said, no, not now. You have no mercy, you had no mercy. And Allah takes mercy out of the hearts of Munafiqeen. Women always have mercy. I'm not going to leave this with you. 
tell me how much it's worth more than more than what's it worth they were quiet silent now this was the guidance of rasulullah so imagine if i am mistreating my daughter my neighbor my wife my any brother sister what will be the state of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mistreating my parents what all amal are presented to him it's not that on the day of judgment he will come and say or oh, no anything every day and night the amals of every ummati are in front of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam the five so rasulullah says to said no no tell me here it is he gave extra double money triple money 100 dirham here you are and leave it to me leave this animal to me they said very my no we will not do he said no no the chance is over now then the prophet alayhi salam said to the camel come here in front of me rasulullah ne farmaya ke tum allah ki raza ke liye azad ho jao you are free for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake no one will touch you graze wherever you want to go go wherever you want to go it says that that, that animal wo jo oont tha usne he brought his head close to prophet alayhi salam and prophet alayhi said amin second time he said uh, he uh, again like the uh, animal speaks sahaba say we could not understand probably some said amin third time he said then he said amin but they could not understand what the animal is saying and fourth time when he made this sound like a camel sound prophet islam's tears began to flow now it was a big surprise for sahaba ikram what's happening they are where is this amin and what's this weeping and we, we don't know and the animal actually went away they asked ya rasulullah sallam we heard amin from you three times and then you wept at the phone prophet islam said that animal gave me four duas four prayers he gave me dekhna janwar ke sath bhi ehsaan kare chahe wo kutta hai billi hai ek kutte ne dua ki wajah se fahsha aurat ki bakhshish ho gayi billi ki dua ya baddua ki wajah se ek aurat ko jahannam mein phenk diya gaya to janwar bhi dua dete hain usne char duaein nabi alaihi salam ko di aur aapne har dua par aam farmaya pehli dua usne kya di he said ae nabi mukarram allah taala aap ko islam aur quran pahunchane ki wajah se behtareen jaza de he said may oh ya rasulullah may allah reward you of conveying the perfect and the beautiful religion of islam and the message of allah quran to the ummah may allah reward you for that prophet alayhi salam said amen and secondly he said ke ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ke jis tarah aapne mera khauf dur kar diya hai you have given me peace from fear i was with fear Oh, I will be slaughtered. Allah kiamat ke din aap ki ummat se khauf dur kar de. May Allah remove the fear and an anxiety of your ummah on the day of judgment. Why is he saying this? Dekha na, ek janwar dua kar raha hai. Wo isliye dua kar raha hai ke usko pata hai ke Nabi Allah Islam ummat se bhoot zyada mahabbat karte hai. To main unki dua dunga to aapko zyada pasand hoga. ye hai taluq this is the relationship with the umma with you umma is not heaven and earth that is umma as well that is also the uh, you sitting here every one of you every one of you you might be sinful you might be thinking i am pious sinful for properly islam the pious he loves and the the who are sinful he has more compassion upon them because he think they will be punished or they can be in difficulty so the first dua which he gave this and a second dua he said ya rasulullah sallam allah may give you an ummah and third thing he said ya rasulullah sallam like you spared me from blood from slaughter may allah protect oh, your ummah to be safe guarded from that any enemy slaughters them and he finishes all of them and he said i said amen and he said the fourth dua which he said give us ya allah save his umma from infighting between themselves 
and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that even i did this dua and allah said no this is going to happen and i knew now this animal dua will not be accepted that as well so that's why the tears were flowing down my cheeks because thinking about the pain and the suffering so this is a message that whoever enters a dispute a quarrel in fighting between a spouse between families between brothers between others they are bringing tears of rasulullah out of him and whoever reconciles they are putting a smile on the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam so i think i have you know kitne baje khatam karna hai azan at 10 minutes so last 10 minutes a very important uh, you may say tip to self control you see it's not difficult first of all understand ye 10 minute reh gaye 10 minute tawajjuh ke sun le look look at the screen now and digest it's very very important how to self control if you know this you will be able to control yourself simple as that it's a method technique it's not actually rocket science you see you have two parts of your brain mind there are many but we are just giving an example conscious subconscious conscious one knows like you are hearing now zikr salah reading books listening to lectures all this is in this brain conscious mind you are you are learning okay everyone wants to be good i don't think there is anyone who wants to be bad they want to be good conscious mind wants to be good because that's where the information is coming and in subconscious mind is the one which is running the body which is running the show which is actually running your life and if that has in it arrogance pornography jealousy swearing abuse anger your life will be look like look like this not like this so whatever the installed whichever software is installed that's going to run in your phone doesn't it for example now if apple samsung send you a new software to wo software run karega if you have an old one and you don't up, update it upload it install it it will still be running on the old one if there's a bug and a virus it will still be there you understand it's not enough no no good enough just to have an update in the phone unless you install it so update to here all information you are hearing you are in milad sharif majalis thing or what's installed is this one so how do we install the good ones and take out the bad one simple that's the answer so conscious subconscious now let's say a person who wants to be patient a conscious knows patience is very good but this gentleman loses his temper every time some he actually is angry and breaks plates hits his spouse and you know disturbs people and comes out of control now if you want patience the way to install patience here to subconscious mind is to repetitively repeatedly whenever there's an opportunity for anger but to exercise caution exercise restraint once twice three times until this will become installed only you have to do like the prophet islam said al hilm hilm bit tahallum you know some people say oh, how can we control anger he said the anger will not come control with the listening to a lecture hilm bit tahallum that doing again and again practicing hilm and patience and restraint again and again will bring you make you a halim person so this is no you want be a generous person okay here is generosity sahi sahi banna chahte hain sahi banna to sab ko acha lagta hai lekin banna mushkil hai kyunki wo jo install hua hua hai wo kanjusi ka software hai aur jab bhi iske bank mein paise hai dil nahi chahta isko nikalne ka jeb mein hai dekhta hai bada na note nikla hai masjid mein dena hai kisi dena hai samjhe jo check karte hain kuch bada na nikle galti se ye kya hai allah ko de raha hai na banda लेकिन उसको वो यकीन नहीं है कि इसको दे रहा हूँ वैसे वो दे दे गर्ल फ्रेंड को भी लोग दे देते हैं दूसरों को भी दे देते हैं वैसे नशे पे भी ज़ाया कर देते हैं लेकिन ये चीज़ 
یقین کی کوئی انسٹال غلط اس سے رانگ ون وچ از انسٹال سو اف یو وانٹ جنراسٹی یو ہیو ٹو فورس یور سیلف بائی پریکٹسنگ اگین اینڈ اگین ون اکیجن آفٹر ون اکیجن آفٹر ڈو دس فور تھرٹی فورٹی ڈیز یو ول فائن یو بیکم اے جنرس پرسن سمپل از دیٹ لائک یو وین یو ٹیک فورٹی ڈرائیونگ لیسن یو بیکم اے ڈرائیور از ناٹ اے راکٹ سائنس سملرلی پونوگرافی ناؤ کم انڈرسٹینڈ I am used to pornography whenever I can't, my eyes become glued to women and this and that, whatever people say, different words. Now, yes, because that's installed there. It's a big problem for Muslim, non-Muslim, because that's destroying, actually, the life, the, you may say, marriage life. You know, recently or some time ago, they did a survey. Survey was to rate their wife. So they put, bring one person, around not good looking women not good looking women jo khoobsurat nahi hai uske darmiyan mein usko bitha ke rate your wife 1 to 10 7 8 9 maybe very khoobsurat hai acha and then they did with the same people they brought them in around very beautiful attractive women now they said rate your wife 2 3 4 this means who you are surrounded by, who you see. If you all day seeing billboards and, and on your Facebook, all these models, photoshopped models, your wife will never look attractive to you. Because she can't be photoshopped. She can't. And a worst scenario is she doesn't dress up as well. She only dress up when she goes and make up when he goes, she goes outside shopping and in front of other people. That's another uh, scenario. Anyway, But to get out of this pornography addiction, all you have to do is, for some time, not forever, some time, one day, every time you have this urge, resist, resist, resist. Once you do it for 30, 40 times, it's out of the system now. Then the habit is gone, but it's up to you now to do it. But you won't be pulled back to it like before. Similarly, smoking, similarly, drugs, So all this, look here, conscious mind, subconscious mind. That's why people ask, why are you not getting out of the world? Why are you listening to the world? Why are you reading the books? Why are you listening to the internet? But I am the devil, the devil. Why are you not getting out of the world? Why are you not getting out of the world? Why are you not getting out of the world? Why are you not getting out of the world? Why are you not getting out of the world? It's all in the conscious mind. I want to be good, but that's not good enough. Good in, You have to actually install it, the good one, and uninstall the bad one. That's how self-control and every, everything. Now, there is no habit which you cannot change. You name it. I will tell you this is the easy formula. It's like apps you have. You go on App Store, Google App Store, Apple App Store. Whichever application you want to download, you can download. Whichever you want to delete, you, can, you have to know the process. So this way, Allah Azza wa Jal has made it easy. That's why in Ramadan we are asked that we achieve taqwa to practice, 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 practice this thing. But that's why we pray five times in every rakat, yaka, nabudwa, yaka, nabika, it has effect. Now there shouldn't be any excuse. Koi ab bahanna ni chalega. Qiyamat wale din na idar. Eh ji, meri adat pad gi hai. Manu te nashe di adat. Tuhi paida hoya de tere mohi cigarette aya. Ni na. To phir iska matlab hai, wo dali hai kahi se aapne. آپ جس طرح ڈالی ہے اسی طرح نکالی وہ اسی دروازے سے اندر آئے ہیں باہر سے بھی وہیں سے نکلنا ہے سو دا وے یو بیکیم اڈکٹیڈ دیٹ از دا وے یو کم بیکم ایکلی اڈکٹیڈ ٹو دا گڈنیس از ویل نیکی کے ساتھ بھی آپ کو سگریٹ سے اڈکشن ہوگی ڈرگ سے کبھی نماز سے بھی اڈکٹ ہو کے دیکھیں قرآن سے بھی اڈکٹ ہو کے دیکھیں ٹرائی ٹو بیکم اڈکٹیڈ ود لو آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم از ویل ٹرائی دیٹ اڈکشن اس اڈکشن کو بھی ٹرائی کر لو دوسری ساری تو کر لی ہے اینی وے ناؤ ایم فنشنگ سو سو دے از اے فل میتھڈالوجی ہاؤ ٹو کنٹرول اف اینی ون وانٹس دے کین ان شاء اللہ آسک امام صاحب اور اینی آف دا برادرز از اے فل میتھڈالوجی کین اینڈ وی کین ایکٹلی اینڈ ناؤ دے ون منٹ لیفٹ اینڈ آئی لائک ٹو فنش ارلی آلویز سو میرے اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ بلیس یو ان شاء اللہ جزاکم اللہ حسن 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 ا